What is up my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Okami. In the last episode, we continued through the Waku Shrine, and we have actually made it to the first major checkpoint in this dungeon. So let's head on through. Uh, actually, I guess it's technically the second major checkpoint, but... Oh. Wait a minute, what? Hold on a second. Ah! Gate shuts behind us. Can you get any more foreboding? <laughs> Look who's here. This guy doesn't waste any time. I like his style. This must be the Silver Demon Nechku. He's one of the twin demons that turned Kamui into an icy waste. What luck finding him alone. Sorry, fella. I know you just recently woke from a long slumber, but you're gonna have to go back to being a statue again. He's just leaving. Okay. Where is he going? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh. My. God. Isn't that you from a hundred years ago, Ami? I don't get it. What's that old selfie yours doing here? And let's begin one of the coolest fights in this entire freaking game. Silver Demon Nechku, and guess freaking what? We have Shunanui on our side, and this fight is freaking awesome. So, I'm gonna see if I can show this really quickly. If I bring up my brush screen, and usually he's pretty immediate about it. Oh, well there's that sub-reflector right there of his. Freaking, freaking powerful. Let's see if I can get him to do a brush technique here. All right, come on, Shooter Nui. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I want to show these. These are so awesome. Come on now. There we go. That's what I like to see. That's right. This regular Gale Storm is more like a freaking tornado. It's Cherry Bomb. Uh, more like Cherry Nuke. <laughs> and let's see. Does he have a Power Slash? Ah, he does. And there's that like Power Slash level fifty thousand and a half. This fight is freaking awesome, and he's just going to finish off Nechku, so I'll just kind of let him. <laughs> Shooter knew he's a little bit OP, guys. A little bit OP. I don't really know if there's much of a way you can lose that fight. It's easy. Shooter knew he does 90% of the work anyway, regardless of what you want to do. <laughs> hey, dude, what is wrong with stealing all the glory? I'd like to see it do that, actually. That would be cool. Oh jeez. Look who decided to join the party. Yep. Yes it is indeed. The gang's all here. <laughs> yep. Oki has decided to cause a ruckus. He sure looks frustrated up there. At last. At last I have you cornered. I'm going to finish you off this time. Kutune shall blade silver. Once more. Oh, jeez. What in the world is going on? No, oh, they ain't. Oh, Oki, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, please. This is what separates a hero from the rest. You are about to witness history in the making. Kutune, trusty sword of the great hero Oki, shall awake.
That scene alone, if not for just the music, gives me chills every freaking time. <sighs> just take a listen to this song for a little bit. The song is called Oki Kermi the Hero, also known as Oki the Hero in out here in the West. It is my favorite track on this entire soundtrack. I think it is perfect. It is so inspiring. Like, gosh, I've never wanted to kick ass more in my life. I love this part so freaking much. Let's talk to Oki real quick here now. Seems those demons fled to the altar on the opposite side, but I have no idea how to get there. The shrine is like a maze. We need something to lead us in the right direction. Let's talk to him again. Wait, remember when this wolf struck one of the demons? Did you see the strange glowing piece that flew off of it? Maybe the shrine and those demons operate in a similar way. If only it was something to lead us in the right direction. Well, you probably saw it over here. It's shining about. Let's pick it up. We got this little gear here. No idea what we just found, but it sure looks interesting. Matarasu, this wolf isn't going to last much longer. I owe my life to this one now. I can't let this wolf die like this. Don't worry, I know this wolf's companion must be around here somewhere. You'll know him right away, he's a Ponkle, just like me. Hmm, so this wolf has a Ponkle companion as well, and it looks almost exactly like a Matarasu. What's going on? Even their sense is the same. It's a long story, believe me. This is not exactly the time to be talking. We gotta chase down those demons. You're right, we must finish them off. Let's do it together this time. And down we go. Now, if you haven't taken a guess, Shiranui, this is where Shiranui was before he m went to the moon cave to save Nagi. This is what killed him, not Orochi. As I said before a few episodes back, we have not in any way altered history whatsoever. This is exactly how it happened. In the actual history, because Amaterasu looks exactly like Shiranui, of course, Nagi mistook it for Sh uh, Shiranui, and so they said that Shiranui fought it, and then in the end, Nagi slew Orochi. On the contrary, Amaterasu actually slays the true Orochi. Shiranui is nearly killed here, and then later travels back to 100 years in the past, and with its dying breath, saves Nagi. And that's, that's how the actual legend works, if you can piece it all together. So... 
We're going to let Oki go off on his own, even though, as Isun said, he's really not all that impressive, ooh, sick burn. And it's time to go through the rest of this dungeon. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, but honestly, I'll just talk about the third arc for a second. I adore this arc. It's actually almost over already. It's by far the shortest arc, so I guess that's one downside to it. But I love this arc simply because of the way it presents its story. I think it just does such an amazing job in such a little amount of time of making you fall in love with the people of Kamui and, like, specifically Oki, Kai, Lika. You know, you just, you fall in love with these characters and they're so, they're just so great. I think it's, I think it's just a lot of fun, this whole arc. And getting to know every single one of these characters but Oki man he is a cool character I'm sorry I know if people love Susano and everything but Oki's like awesome because he really kind of he really grows up like way more than anyone else does Susano's still st completely full of himself if you couldn't already tell totally full of himself so that has not even changed in the slightest he's still definitely the Susano we know. But, that aside, didn't make that jump, great. Uh, okay, well, I guess I need to make them go a little bit further. No, 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 ice, please. Where's, where's my ice? There, where, can I, oh, there we go. Great, and they all disappeared. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, from this one. Gosh, it does not like to put one very close. No, it doesn't at all. Okay. Oh, shoot. That was close. Uh, I can't believe I didn't get hit by that. All right, wait for it. 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 Wait, wait, wait for it. Hope you like that seizure I just gave you there. And that opens that up. But uh, oh, anyways, the only reason I... I think I like the second arc more than the third arc, and honestly, I like the environments uh, of the third arc more than the second arc. I think Kamui is just awesome. It is just this whole area is beautiful. I'm a sucker for snow areas, okay, and ice levels. It's just too bad that in most platformers they suck, but in this game, I can forgive it, and I um I can forgive the platforming for it, and because of that, I absolutely adore this area. I think it's the most gorgeous part of the entire game, in my opinion. Although I know a lot of people disagree and say Ryoshima Coast, and that's totally understandable because that area is amazing too. But the one reason I like, I think I like Ryoshima, the whole second arc more, and there's only one reason, and that's because of how fleshed out that area is in comparison to this one. While the story here is overall more amazing, I think it suffers from two things. One, the fact that it's shorter, and two, the fact that, and oh by the way, yes, this world finishes ice, but I think I just screwed it up. Yes, I did. Um, and two, the fact that there are, oops, mistakes in the, and typos and all that stuff. Like, it feels like they almost got a little bit lazy or rushed out the end or something like that. That's what it kind of feels like to me. But, you know, other than that, ah, oh, this area is just perfect. It really is. I adore this, this whole part of the game. I think it's just the most amazing and fantastic part. And I just really wish that... I could push this ball with the wind, but more than that, I just really... Why the hell can I not push this thing? I seriously cannot push this ball. Okay. Like, it will not move. Okay, hold on. Hold on. It's like it's blowing the, other, the wrong way, though. There we go. Okay, that at least did something with it. Come on, you can come out. There you go, and you're probably going to go over the edge, but that's okay, because you'll just respawn right there and go off the edge again. Okay. Anyways. And yeah, okay, and the last thing I want to say is just... It only picks up from here. Like, it gets better, too, the story of this game. It just gets better. Like, the ending of this, I, I can promise you it's not going to go where you think it goes. At least I didn't think so. It's... It's very... I mean, unless you already know how it goes, but it's very, I guess, surprising. So, stay tuned for all that. Anyways, we are about done here in the Waku Shrine. We are about done here in the third arc. In fact, in the next video, we will be finishing it up. 
So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Squirtle King. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Okami very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.